Hey guys, so remember when I said that uh, AI still sucks at uh, creating art? Well, apparently this evolved quite rapidly and I was reading the news this morning and I found this article in the New York Times and also uh, another one in French uh, journal Le Monde uh, about an artwork that sold at Christie's for 432,000 uh, $500, which is quite uh, a lot, uh, more than actually expected. So this is a, a a first because this is the first time a work of art produced by an AI is sold at, at an auction like this. Uh, it's a work that was created by a French art collective called Obvious. And it's called, the title is Edmond de Bellamy from La Famille de Bellamy. You can see like it uses codes of uh, portraits, like traditional portraits, like 19th century maybe. And, um, and it's uh, not a painting, it's actually a print. And the AI sort of created the image digitally and they printed it. So what's the difference between when you print a photo of your friend or um, of your family? Because the AI didn't reproduce pixel by pixel. This time the AI came up with its own design, creating this, this uh, painting. So apparently the technique was to feed the machine with um, like some th something like 15,000 paintings so that the machine uh, would learn on its own how to create a painting. So the, th the first thing that you can notice is how the computer has created the eyes and the features of the face, which is very weird and to me indicate the presence of, a, of an int artificial intelligence um, or someone with serious mental problems. So right here it's a it's an artificial intelligence that created this and you can see that it didn't consider that the features of the face were uh, more important than the rest. So there is absolutely no focus brought on the eyes or the nose or the mouth, which is like the very basic thing, like give give a child um, a pen and it, he will, he or she will um, draw a, a, round, a round shape, put two points for the eyes, one one mark for the nose and one one like smiley curve for the mouth. That's, that's uh, a mental archetype of the human brain because we interact with our eyes, we interact with the pr expressions on the faces of the people we see, and um, and clearly the machine ignores that completely. So this work has been criticized as well by other artists working with AI. So the argument was that the the result was unoriginal the collective of artists obvious said yeah this is the creativity and the originality of the machine when we just feed the machine and with minimal intervention minimal human intervention as they say as they claim well okay and some other artists working with ai criticized this and and said that this is unoriginal so i don't know who to trust um, I'm just going to say that um, who cares about originality? First of all, you have to use the process right uh, when you learn arts. Uh, so the machine has been self-learning. So let's just say that an artist wanted to, f to paint the same thing. So take this painting, for instance. This is a painting by Ingres called uh, Louis-François Bertin. So it is a, this is quite an unoriginal painting, but it's still a good painting. It still conveys some type of human emotion. You know, there is some type of focus on the eyes and uh, the mouth and the nose. And you can clearly see the likeness of the person. But you can say that this is 
unoriginal in a way. This is very unoriginal. Many paintings have been done like this. But the first thing to do is to do the unoriginal things right. So the first thing that you have to focus on as an artist, if you are not um, self-learning like the machine, is, well, you want to do like everybody else at first, do as well as everyone else at first, and then once you have reached the technical mastery of your skills, you can then proceed to being more original. So I, I don't know about this uh, critic of not being original because a human would not consider not being original at first. A human would still first consider that the technical ability has to be maximized before the originality can be a factor. So a human being will always want to learn first and then be original. So I don't know, y you tell me, d does the originality thing really matter to you? And, and it raises a debate on are machines creative? No, they are not. A collective of artists like human beings had to force the machine to do that. The machine would not have done uh, a painting on its own, it would just have considered that, th that it's absolutely useless and not do it at all. So people have to be involved. The creativity that we question right here is not the creativity of the machine. Oh no, it's not. It's the creativity of the, the collective obvious that uh, sold this. And by the way, how much did the machine receive from this great price, um, I don't think it received a lot. So where's the originality right here? I think it's mostly... Um, I think the, the price doesn't reflect the quality of the work. That's not the first time. I mean, this, for instance, this painting by Cy Twombly, 79 millions. All right, but I still haven't... I still have a critique. So first of all, I will admit that the machines are superior for art when you give the computer uh, paint, brushes, and, um, and you know, palette knives and a palette, and you ask them to actually paint and not print the picture. First of all, I would admit that computers are superior when they are capable of handling the freaking paint because that's very hard to do and a machine is absolutely incapable of um, of uh, controlling fluids at the moment. This is something extremely complex, extremely complex. This is why as us humans we first learn how to handle the paint first and then we learn how to create the picture that's in our heads. But um, a machine, I don't see how a machine could do that. So that's the next step. If they want to do that, that's the next step. I think they should not buy inkjet prints for this sum of money. I think this is, um, this is insane. I don't really understand how it works, but whatever. And the second thing is if the machine wants to be superior, it has to learn how to focus on key elements. If you want to paint a portrait, you have to know how to focus on key elements. You cannot just treat everything like it's the same, like it's irrelevant, because a human would clearly define the eyes a little bit more, even if it's just, just randomly designed like this. It has to be better than this. I mean, seriously, really, you have to do something, because it clearly shows that you're not human. You don't interact with humans using the eyes like we do. So if you want to create art, you have to convey some type of emotion, some type of expression. The creativity of the machine doesn't exist. It doesn't have any creativity because if you leave the machine alone, it's not going to paint. If you leave a human alone and it's bored, it's probably going to paint at some point. If you give a child uh, colors, it's going to paint. You put a... Um, you put the, the program in a computer and you don't launch the program, the machine is never going to paint on its own. It's never going to create art on its own just because it's bored. 
humans have to ask the machine to do these sort of things. So I think it's a fun experience, but it still doesn't replace humans and it still doesn't prove anything about how machines could be um, building something new in terms of art, of artistic creation. To me, this work brings nothing in terms of creativity overall, and it, it doesn't show any new path to art creation, artistic creation. I think new ways of artistic creation have to first be unoriginal, but be good at being unoriginal and then be original. Um, you cannot just program a machine to create something original. But apparently you can sell it for a quite reasonable price. So let me know what you think, guys. Uh, I'll see you for the next video. Until then, take care and um, have fun painting with your uh, computers, apparently. Bye.